Hi, everyone. Welcome to this session, Auto Fragment Modeling Introduction. So I'll start with the background introduction. Why are we interested in heavy hydrocarbons? So one of the reason is that it's the starting material for lighter hydrocarbons. And we can know the potential of some light product generation. And it could be useful for improving the, the current refining processes or searching for some applications such as polymer recycling. So um, instead of doing experiment, why are we trying to do, do it by simulation? And what is the advantage of making a kinetics model? So um, the first reason is that we uh, sometimes we might not be able to conduct experiments under some conditions. And we can get a sense about the chemistry of a system of interest, which we probably do not have data by hand. And we can also use it to help us predict some observables, such as product yields. And what techniques can we use to build kinetics model? So there are two main categories. The first one is the simplified method, which is called the lumping method. It usually combines similar species together into groups. And we usually do the lumping based on what we can observe experimentally. For example, aliphatic species versus aromatic species. And the second one is the detailed model, which um, basically try, tries to track every molecule, including every isomers during the model generation. And here is a brief comparison table um, for both methods. So the reason to add all the extra complexity in the detailed model is that we can save the effort to conduct experiments to get fitted rate coefficients. And we can avoid inaccurate extrapolations from the fitting conditions. And also, hopefully, it can capture some cross reactions with rate estimated from first principles. So on one of the software which can help us to build kinetics model automatically is a reaction mechanism generator. So I believe um, everyone who is watching this video is probably familiar with RMG. So uh, what can RMG achieve? We can have high extrapolation flexibility model because it's basically showing the fundamental chemistry and it's the most detailed level of mechanism. However, there are some difficulties using RMG. So uh, some current challenges RMG is facing is that as the species or the systems gets larger, there will be combinatorial explosion in number of possible reactions and possible isomers. And currently, it will be difficult to generate a fully detailed model for larger than 20 carbon systems by RMG, even with some memory saving techniques like filter reactions or pruning. So one of the possible solutions is that try to maintain the species at certain size during modeling can effectively limit the possible numbers of species and reduce the memory requirements. For example, if we look at the right-hand side plot here, the X axis is the carbon number in the feedstock. So um, if we look at the um, blue line here, it's the full detailed modeling method. So we can, as we can, um, we can see as the carbon number increase, the total number of distinct molecules will um, increase a lot and make it soon to be intractable. However, if we somehow try to maintain the uh, species size, let's say we think five carbons or eight carbons, then the orange, the red line and the orange line here shown here, can, we can see the total number of distinct molecules will still be trackable. So instead of tracking every species, we could instead keep track of molecular fragments that will behave similarly. So now I'm going to introduce the auto fragment modeling AFM. Since RMG tracks the concentration of every isomer, it assumes similar components to react similarly. So we can instead keep, keep track of molecular fragments that will behave similarly. So the idea of fragments is trying to maintain within being smaller than the whole molecule, but larger than tiny functional group. So the idea is to breaking down large molecules to reduce the computation cost and develop reaction modeling between fragments. So for example, if we look at here, originally we have a large molecule 
then the first step is trying to identify each um, functional group. And then the second one is trying to search some um, potential feasible cutting position, which will avoid directly cutting at the functional group itself. And then after performing the cutting, then we will have a set of fragments, which will, as you can see here, um, attach um, some R's, which is called cutting label on the cutting position. And this is the workflow of AFM. Basically, it follows the same strategy as the normal RMG job. So the first step is to um, prepare the input file, which has fragments or molecules. And then it will use AFM and RMG to have to generate the fragment model. Once we have the fragment model, we can further use some simulators such as Cantera or Kemkin to help us do some post-processing calculation. And the final step is trying to re resume the um, molecular information by doing reattachment so that we can get the information that we really care about, for example, such as um, molecular weight distribution. So I'll first start with um, talking about how to generate fragments. So um, here we can see, suppose we have uh, a starting material, which is really large, then by uh, searching for some potential cutting position, then we will have pseudo atom, which is called cutting label, either R or L attached on the each cutting position here. And we also define some specific patterns to avoid cutting at certain position. For example, the uh, aromatic C bond. So here are two types of patterns. The first one is the aromatic patterns shown here. And the second one is the aliphatic patterns shown here. And it will start from the most complicated patterns matching to the less complicated pattern matching. So here is the order to perform cut. And it used the um, subgraph isomorphism for checking substructures. And it will also use some constraints to maintain the fragment size within user specified range, which I'll talk about later. So currently there are two methods to generate fragments of to, for the input file. The First method is to use the IPython script, which is called cut molecule into fragments, shown here. So you can just input the molecule smiles, and it can help you to get the output of a list of fragment smiles, so that once you get this, you can specify fragments and the corresponding molar fraction in the input file, such as here, either by smiles or by adjacency list. And the second method is to specify large molecule in the input file so that it will automatically perform the cutting for you. And here is like the, the, the thing you have to notice is that you have to um, specify the cut to be true. And you can also specify the size, size threshold to make each fragment to be at least having like five here is at least having five carbon on each single fragment. So it will automatically redefine initial molar fractions and termination conversion. So the gen and the generated list of fragments will be printed out showing. So for example, showing here. And after specifying the species, then the next thing is to specify reaction conditions in the input file. So one thing we have to be noticed is that when you're specifying the pressure for fragments jobs, you have to multiply by a factor of initial pieces of fragments from the molecule. For example, um, if you're trying to simulate 20 bars for molecule jobs, then you have, to, and for example, you um, cut the molecule into two fragments, then you have to specify um, a factor of two for the pressure in the fragment input file, which is trying to ensure the same amount of initial amount in the system. 
So after we prepare the um, input fragments, then how can we estimate the thermal chemical properties for fragments? Since a fragment itself is pseudo component, which has no clear definition of absolute values, but we can um, instead estimate the change of properties before and after the reaction. So we create representative molecule to obtain um, fragments thermal properties. So uh, here's an example. For fragments in the AFM, it will replace a R with a somehow complicated structure and then estimate the thermal property of this whole molecule and assign the thermal property to this fragment. How can we estimate the rate constants? So we here on, it follows the same idea about normal RMG jobs. We use the fragment to match the reaction templates and then map to the corresponding node in the hierarchical tree in RMG. So RMG will use either experiment or ab initial calculation data to estimate the kinetics parameters for fragment reactions. So once we have the fragment model, what should we do? As I mentioned before in the workflow slide, we can have some post-processing of fragment model, such as the reactor simulation, so that we can get a list of fragment concentration. And then we can do the recombination between the fragments to recover the molecular information. So here is the rest part of the workflow. So uh, probably at this moment, after we get the, we have the fragment model, then we should ask one question. What information do we want from the model? So apparently we want to obtain the molecular information from the simulation. For example, the reactant conversion, the carbon number distribution, or the molecular weight distribution. And after reactor simulation, we only have a list of fragment concentration. So how to um, recover the molecules from the fragments? So one thing we have to do now is called re a fragment recombination to recover the molecular information from the fragments. The first step is to categorize all the fragments into some groups. For example, the uh, molecules or fragments contain only R, only L, or fragments which has R and L in it. And since the total number of R fragments equals to the total number of L fragments. So the practical steps in real alg algorithms is to grind on the concentrations into several smaller unit pieces and then randomly shuffle them and pair each unit pieces. So here is an animation. So um, suppose for now we have already finish the pairing between the R labels fragments and with the L label fragments. And the rest of them are the fragments with both R and L cutting label on that. Then we can just randomly select some pairs to put them in. So then finally we can get the information of molecules. And here is the useful post-processing scripts which is called the general fragment simulation reattachment. And once you have, you use the script post-processing scripts, you can have the output to show the conversion profile or the molecular weight distribution or the carbon number distribution. And here are some application examples. So let's start with the simplest case, which is the octane one. And here I try to cut at the middle point to have the um, R fragments and L fragments shown here. So from the uh, conversion comparison plot, we can see the fragment method. The fragment model is pretty close, has, has the pretty close result compared with the molecular octane model. By comparing the um, molecular weight distribution or the 
carbon distribution, you can see cutting will definitely lose certain connectivity information. The fragment method shows the potential of modeling alkene. And similar product distribution between detailed and fragment model, as we can see here. And another more complicated example is you try to model phenyldotecan PDD. So different color code here shows different cutting strategy. And here we try to compare the conversion and some important species concentration. So here um, try uh, to exclude the influence of recombination, we just compare the um, toluene concentration and the ethyl benzene concentration. So from here, we can see the random recombination might get us to have some large molecule weight species. And another thing should be noticed is that the cutting position really matters. So, uh, so for here, we can see the yellow one has a really different behavior compared to all the other colors, in, also showing in the conversion plot here. So we know some really bad cutting strategy might lead to miss important pathway. And bad cut can lead to really different model behavior. For example, the yellow cutting strategy here. So uh, if we try to use the, this fragment method to um, a more complicated system, such as here, the three component surrogates, and here is the cutting position that I choose uh, for the input. So for here, as we can see, by comparing the conversion or the total co radical concentration, or even the um, total double bond concentration and the total CH3 functional group concentration, we can see the fragment model has really close behavior and results compared with the molecular method. And what if we reattach fragments and compare their compare directly with the experimental results? So as we can see here, the red dots are the experimental result and the blue dots are the fragments result. So uh, three time points shown on each plot, which is the time equals to zero, three hours and six hours. As the color gets darker, which means the time passes. So for here, we can see the fragment method can, affect, can successfully predict the echo aromatic chain species and the echo aliphatic chain species. However, there are some limitations on fragment method. Once the cutting is performed, some reaction might not appear in the model. So the end connectivity information will not be fully recovered. So we have to be really careful at the cutting position we choose. And some features are under development to op optimize the method of cutting as well as the reattachment. And another thing we have to be noticed is that the size of each fragment will affect the speed of model generation and the chemistry. So for the problem of big fragments is that it probably may take too many computational resources and then slow down the simulation speed. For the problem of small fragments, which probably will get uh, the small fragments concentration might affect the real chemistry. And also small fragments already itself has, has some limit, really limited reaction to react, for example, uh, showing here. So an idea called fragment renormalization could probably be helpful after reacting for a certain time, we might have some poor size fragments, either too large or too small. Then the idea is to recombine them back to molecules and then recut them back to good size fragments. So during model generation, it might take too much time on reacting sites mapping or creating the isomers. So we don't want the process to be delayed. So probably perform carting if large molecules are created, can help us avoid this kind of issue. During model generation, if species size exceeds the threshold, then we will perform the cutting in the age. And if all species are moved to core, the other related reactions 
would be included into core as well. And for now, only a few reaction families will have this kind of issue potentially, which is the radical recombination and the radical addition to multiple bond reaction family. And we can also set the threshold of species size to cut. So for now, let's say probably um, the current threshold is once the species has more than 20 carbons, then it will cut. And once we perform the cutting, the reaction will be changed to be irreversible, which is shown here. But like, how about the reverse direction of the reaction? So we don't need to worry about that because the reverse reaction can be generated afterwards in the fragment form. So for, for example, shown here. Then let's discuss about the small fragments. So we can also set some thresholds for turning on the fragment renormalization, especially for small fragments case. For example, the total small fragment concentration, if it exceeds, let's say 25 percentage, then we will do the um, recombine step with the um, timed interval this long. And one thing we have to know about one of the threshold is the number of core species. Because we, we don't want to have the fragment renormalization um, to be turned on at the very early stage, since we don't really want to mess up the, the chemistry here. So if the small fragment concentration exceeds some threshold, then we will reattach the fragments and recut them to redistribute all the species concentration at some time point. And the simulation will continue with the new set of concentration of four species. So here is an example of using octane cut at the midpoint. At T1, um, before renormalization, we can see we have a lot of the really tiny fragments and we have some molecules already. So at T1 as well, after we do the renormalization, then we can see the in the orange block, we can see that once we have um, combine CR with some CL into the species, which is already in the molecule form in the core species, then the species will not be cut once it's formed. So here you can see. And then we can see in the blue blocks that um, by doing, after doing the fragment renormalization, the number of really tiny, small fragments can be uh, effectively reduced. So here is the conclusion that the detailed models can be generated a priori, and it's useful when collecting experimental data would be somehow slow or difficult. And AFM is now fully automatic. And this framework shows some potential to model many complex systems. For example, the alkanes, alkyl aromatic species, or even surrogate system. And this framework shows good model generation speed without sacrificing important chemistry. And the fragment renormalization is still under development. And if you have any questions, feel free to get the RMG website and the documentation or on the, get the um, GitHub repo, which is shown here, the link is provided here, or uh, directly email me and my email is showing here. So thank you.